Okay, thank you. So I feel like I'm obliged in these presentations to start off with a startling statistic, something damning that we'll all say, wow, I should pay attention. Like one in five women over the age of 65 have osteoporosis, and one in 20 men over the age of 65 also have osteoporosis. But I'd like to point out the things that maybe aren't so um, damning, so to speak, and that's that our ultimate bone mass and bone strength is kind of determined by something that we all wish we could do, and that's to pick our parents wisely. Our genetics <laughs> determine 70 to 75 percent of the ultimate amount of bone mass that we get. Now, the good part of that is that we still have 20 to 25 percent of modifiable factors that we can control in order to increase our bone mass. But there's an assumption there, and there's an obsession in the research with bone mass. And that bone mass peaks at 26. And we know that by the time we get to 65, a lot of us might have osteoporosis, so it's too little too late. And for all of us in here, I'm going to have to say, if it peaks at 26, I hope we did the right thing already. <laughs> so I'm just not giving us any hope whatsoever. And I really apologize for that. But what I'd like you to know is that my research is really about the children that we do have now in adolescence. And that's where I've focused my time. So <clears throat> what we do know is that between the age of 10 to 20 years of age, we start to exponentially increase our bone mass just by the nature of growth. But if we control factors like gender, your ultimate size, as well as even physical activity level, there's a large percentage of unexplained variance that determines our bone strength. Prior research, like I said before, has focused on our bone mass. But what we do know is that that's not the only factor that determines our bone strength. So I'll give you an analogy. You could give me a 1,000 Lego blocks, and I'd be ecstatic. And you could give those same 1,000 Lego blocks to an architect, and you tell us to build the strongest structure. And although I have a lot of confidence and faith in myself because I'm in the School of Engineering, I'm a sports scientist. And I'm going to bet that architect builds a much stronger structure than I do. That's what bone mass is in the human body. We could give two individuals the same amount of Lego blocks or bone mass, but how we construct our bone determines the ultimate strength of it. So that made me think that maybe we're not looking at quite the right thing when we focus on bone mass. Although it's easily measured because we can do it in DEXA, we have better measurements now, and we luckily have one here at ECU, to look at actual bone strength. And although bone mass has a portion of explained variance for your ultimate bone strength. There's other factors like how your bone is structured that determines our bone strength. So what I did was I wanted to look at a particular type of fitness because what you've heard, and you, you probably know this, make sure you drink milk, make sure you get plenty of physical activity. You want to get a little bit of vitamin D, so you got to get a little bit of sunlight. And we want to do all those things because it's important for us to have bone strength. But what we don't know is what type of exercise that is. Is it enough to just go walk around the block? Well, what I ended up looking at was in that significant time point, adolescence, is the type of fitness that we have related to the strength of our bones. And that's the first question that I had. And it's an important one, and it's the start of a longitudinal study that then, of course, feeds into if that is a relationship, this type of fitness that I'm going to look at and bone strength, as I modify that type of fitness, because that's relatively easy to do for a sports scientist, does that ultimately change the structure of the bone so that we can elicit that type of strength that we want early on because it's only downhill from there, unfortunately. So what we looked at was neuromotor fitness. And neuromotor fitness is specific. It's not how long you can run, but think of it as how fast you can do it. So if we were going to pick our parents wisely, we pick a sane bolt because in my theory, He's so fast, he's got to have strong bones. And the interesting thing about it is that when we controlled all those other factors, like sex and mass, we found that the explained variance between your actual bone strength, not bone mass, but bone strength, can be explained in the magnitude of 55% by the speed at which you run. And that's unique. And it would and is similar if we look at how well you jump or how rapidly you can produce force in any maneuver, but sprint speed's just something easy for us to measure. So what we've determined and what we want to look further into is if we continue to peak our neuromotor fitness more so, can we get our bones stronger for the ultimate downfall? <laughs>